Okay. Can you hear me a little bit? I don't know what's going on with my mics this morning. <laughs> I guess that'll have to do for best as I can do at the moment. I tried to change some things around at the last minute and well, that goes well. Good morning, Jim. <laughs> How are you? All right. Yeah, I turned on my um, built-in computer mic because my USB mic is uh, not wanting to work for some reason, but oh well, I'll mess with it later. I tried to get a USB hub set up at the last minute and so much for that. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> good, good. Um, yeah, so I'm slightly more human today. I still have a, a respiratory infection, but I'm definitely finally on the upswing. I didn't put on my face cam today because I think I still look like how I feel. <laughs> And that was just a little extra effort that I didn't have it in me. But next uh, stream, everything should be back to normal. Hopefully. It's <laughs> pending anything crazy happening. But continuing off of the very short one on Monday where I set down my little guys for uh, <clears throat> transfer print, my little broken eggs. Today I'm going to be working on lifting up the paper to reveal the print. So the first thing to do is to really saturate this paper as best as I can. I've done a better job of cleaning up my workspace a bit before this, but well, that is what it is. <laughs> At least I'm here. But I got a little, just a spray bottle with some water in it. So I'm going to give these an initial spray. Give them a second to let that soak in a little bit. And I have plenty of water nearby as well. Just You can kind of see as the paper gets wet. That's what I'm looking for, is to get it pretty much all the way through soaked like that. All the little spots. Yeah. So that's getting there. And then it's kind of a matter of fairly gently working the paper. Um, I have a little rag, a little washcloth that's been abused and is now relegated to rag or studio status. I could just start to kind of like gently pull the paper away. You kind of see that it's uh, pilling up in a way. You can actually zoom in maybe a little bit here. Make sure they're still in good focus. I want to knock my coffee off the table while I'm moving things around. So just lifting the paper gently, a little bit at a time. And there you can already see this dark here, that's the print. That's the, the ink. So this one's coming off very, very nicely, very easily. So it can be a little time consuming, depending on how well everything's set up to begin with. And I do like to cut my print subjects pretty close to the size of the image because you can get some hard lines where uh, what's it called the medium the print medium that I use to adhere it to like wherever that paper ends there can be a bit of a line from it so that's my way to kind of uh, control where that line is and that I've just learned from trial and error but never has been such that it's really bothered me. So it's pretty almost subtle there like I don't know without the whole things being visible on some of these down here you may not even like recognize what that was supposed to be but we'll just continue moving along get to this one right in the middle where it's the whole thing we'll start gently little circles working that paper away. Okay. 
be a little messy. There'll definitely be some uh, cleanup required <laughs> for all the peeling bits of paper that come off of it. Oh, we got some of the whole print of it came off in the back there, but that's okay. I'm not going to be like, I'm not that worried about how clearly these come through, like what it's supposed to be. That's not really that big of a deal. On this particular piece, sometimes it matters more. Sometimes it ends up being more of a textural element than anything else. Kind of picking up some of the paper that goes around it um, so my edge isn't very hard. I maybe didn't have enough medium on there to get a nice clean edge and I'm going to blame that on having been sick as a dog when I got this done. <laughs> okay well that is a reveal. I, I mean <laughs> can you tell what it is? Nah. It's fine. Hopefully that you get the idea of how this works. I could have certainly done a better job had I been in a more focused state of mind when I put these down. You need a pretty thick layer of medium, especially when you're working over other paper because you don't want to pick up the other paper. I mean, this is not canvas. This is watercolor paper. So in itself, you get that particularly wet and work at it like this, you're gonna destroy your paper. Same with all the, <clears throat> the layers of uh, of magazine prints underneath. They'll do the same thing too. Got a little cleaner edges on this guy. I am picking up some of the entire thing over here, some of the underlayers. You want to be really gentle to try to avoid some of that happening. Well, I don't know if I'd say I'm particularly happy with the outcome here. But I'm not, like, it doesn't ruin anything for me. So it'll probably just get... <laughs> I mean, I was able to kind of demonstrate for you guys how that process works, but I didn't do a very good job of it. So I think the best case that they would do continuing from here outside of a proper cleanup of my workspace, which will happen after the stream, is going to be just continuing to work on the painting. And these elements will probably get just integrated into the textures. So I'll pull out a little bit again here for my zoom so you can see the whole picture. this here. And I think we're okay. Nope. There we are. Okay. So, well, you know, try to think. <laughs> and that's fine. So I'm going to pick up with my watercolor over here. Continue laying down a layer of maybe some flesh tone and then probably one more layer with some shadows and then if I need more detail at that point we'll add more detail but let's give her start looking up a little bit of a flesh tone for this for this lady Let's see. Kind of 
blood here. Feels a little warm. I think that'll be okay. All right, I think we'll go with this. I think I have enough pink tones kind of already in my girl here to make something like this work pretty well. Let's give it a try. like a homogenizing layer, maybe we'll call it. Just like skin tone. That being the case. Create a cooler tone. Oh, little paper bits in my palette here. A little cooler tone to go back in for some shadow bits. So this can be pretty fluted. I'm letting this be, I'm doing wet on wet here, <clears throat> so it's not going to be a very detailed, sharp layer of shadow. <clears throat> Just a tone, cooler tone. since most of her flesh tone is very warm. Kind of working with some opposites here. This is a bluish greenish color that I'm laying down for some cooler hints to kind of neutralize some of the warmth a little bit. Painting right now feels like it's getting a little messy to me. But we'll see. Let me pull it back around. I, I uh, definitely <clears throat> was to show how much, like, how you're feeling when you're working on something can impact the outcome of it. Because I think. If you're not feeling great, get a little sloppy and kind of allow those things to just can like be much more okay with sloppiness than you might otherwise be. <clears throat> Whew. 
which leads to more challenges as you continue your work. But even if this doesn't end up like working out this painting in general, it's fine. Not everything's going to be a masterpiece, but I'm not calling it a loss yet. I'm not giving up on it yet. Have you ever noticed how many people have very <clears throat> non-symmetrical nostrils? It's a random thing that I've noticed doing lots of portrait type work. Pretty interesting. <laughs> but I also am one of those people. Let that dry. And I think we're going to put down some color over here. <clears throat> some layers of paint, of uh, acrylic paint. And I'm going to also utilize some gesso. And this also, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> ah, there it is. Okay. So let's get here what color. Bring in at the moment. A little bit of green, I'm thinking. So I'm going to do a little bit of like mixing right on my palette, my uh, palette knife. So I got a little just over here. A little bit of my chromium oxide green on here. I didn't hear me chewing on something. I have a cough drop. Secrets. <laughs> Trying to maintain some order of my self when <laughs> I try to talk to at all. So I'm not coughing and hacking along the entire time. That was the goal. nice thing about working with a nice heavy body uh, gesso is you get some beautiful textures with it too. It's just something I enjoy a lot.
I don't have much interesting to talk about since my last couple streams just was I spent most of it semi passed out on the couch <laughs> feeling like death. Think, <clears throat> I always think if I have like the downtime that I'd get more like oh I'd have time to you know do some more reading of things I'd enjoy to read and all that kind of stuff but somehow it never is the reality when you actually feel terrible it's been a lot of nothing nothingness happening working in with virtually no plan at the moment. I'm just sort of seeing what happens, what feels like a thing. Thing to keep in mind if you're working with a really nice heavy gesso like this is that it does take quite a while for layers to dry when you lay it down nice and thick. So that is definitely a not necessarily a challenge but just reality of the medium that you just have to be aware of. See where we are now. Some I picked up some random things <coughs> over the over time. Here's one I haven't used yet. Scribbles iridescent plum luster. This reminds me of oh I think it's meant to be like a fabric paint. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, I remember you'd get that, those, these 3D puffy paints to like make your own t-shirts. Of course, you give a 10-year-old the opportunity to design their own t-shirt, it's probably going to be pretty terrible, if I recall, but I would love that stuff. And wrapper's still on this, if I can figure out getting that off. <laughs> on something. No, yeah, that's fine. I definitely have a bit of a reckless streak when it comes to <laughs> working on my art. Like, oh, I don't know what this will do. Let's just do it and see what happens. Create a giant mess and then have to figure out how to handle that. <coughs> oh, where's the fun otherwise? But if I went into any piece that I was making with a sense of like preciousness about it, not being willing to just experiment and try things and play around without the risk of destroying it. Where's the risk in learning something new and coming up with something amazing? So it's a trade-off. I think this truly is just <clears throat> No plan, just screwing around. Just what do I call it? What have I called it? Intuitive, just intuitive working. Just messing. 
Mary Beth, hello. Good to see you today. I'm just making a mess. There's another one of these iridescent gold, golden turquoise. Golden, okay, looks like turquoise to me. I'm not sure where the golden is. Whatever. Let's see what that one is. Oh, out of the tube. Whoa. <laughs> All right, then. A little transparent. Look at that. Interesting. I guess that's why it's meant to be so thick. giant jar of gesso for the moment. I love this stuff. Super heavy gesso. Yeah, for anyone who wasn't here to see uh, my reveal of my, my transfer prints, it didn't go very well and that was due to user error. When I put them down initially I didn't use enough gel medium. I was, <clears throat> I mean if you watch that very short stream, I was quite sick and uh, yeah, not thinking well <laughs> about what I was doing so it was what it was. Okay, let me get this up here start to like, as I'm messing around, my page moves a little bit and starts to wander away from the camera a little bit. Okay. It's still a little damp over here. I'll wait till that dries more. In the meanwhile, what else can we do? <clears throat> what else can we mess around with? I have some ink. Some inks here. Play with some inks. Move around a little bit on there. Don't go too heavy on ink placement with uh, acrylic, or not acrylic. <laughs> On watercolor pad, when I'm working on a watercolor pad, it can seep through to oh, pieces below. Actually, ink is like the only thing I've had that issue with. If you go too heavy-handed with it, it certainly can happen. So something to be aware of. All right, I'm making a lovely mess this morning. These having been cracked eggs, even though you can't really see them, I think that I'm going to kind of create like a dripping yolk thing going on here, maybe. Because let's just, I mean, if we're going to make a mess, let's make a mess. Paint it over my board as well. That's fun, that 3D paint line kind of grabbed and held some of that drip. I'm going to do some of the same thing down here in this one. A little less though. Maybe a little bit up here, although this will probably get covered up a little bit. Okay. So even though it's not like obvious, what those are in my mind it's like cracked egg egg yolk 
coming out. It's one of those weird things where it's like, I think I know kind of like what I know the thing about it, <laughs> you know? And, but it doesn't really matter if anybody else gets it. Um, that's kind of a random fun thing about when you're looking can like incorporate little little meanings of things that you get and it doesn't matter if anyone else is on board with you or not. Okay. <clears throat> certainly could be using a uh, dryer, like a hair dryer, to hurry things along with this working with watercolor. I never really do that. I can't exactly tell you why. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> but that is... Tend to just kind of let it be. It like forces me to slow down and have to think for a second. God forbid. <laughs> Thinking it's always dangerous. <clears throat> All right, but anyway, I can take a moment here to absorb where things are at. I feel like there's still a long way to go on this whole section. stands out the give me a ring I like it I don't know if I want it to stand out quite as much as it is now um yeah I'll think on that a little bit just have it to do here This is a uh, oil pastel. There have been many paintings or things that I've worked on where I've taken them to the point of thinking there's no rescuing it. I think it's gone too far. I've destroyed anything worth uh, bringing back, but then somehow it does end up coming back. Not always. But I definitely don't rush to destroy anything. to give up on it necessarily because well I mean there is a level of destruction in this method I think we can be real about that destroy build up destroy build up it's a an incredible little bit of almost like therapy too which is sort of interesting some of that orange paint all over my hands. <laughs> the best example of this happening yet has been uh, when I was doing the David Bowie portrait live. <laughs> And I was applying that blue at the very top above his head, and then it just like ran down his forehead. It's like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing that now. I guess, I guess that's this piece now. <laughs> but you know, it's like good old Bob Ross said: there are no, no mistakes, just happy accidents. And the, the trick becomes how do you make it work? Can always be made to work. At least in my mind. And the way that I work, always a way to make it work. Yeah. 
Uh, this reserve five micron is probably a little too fine to show up on there. Let's go back to eight. See if this works at all. Yeah, let's lay down a bunch of uh, oil pastel and try to draw ink on top of it. Wandering picture again, starting to walk away. <clears throat> All right, let's see where we are here. Try to make sure I don't have any wet acrylic paint on my hands when I go over here to my portrait side. All right, still a little cool, slightly cool to the touch, but pretty much dry. <coughs> Let's see. What else can I make a mess out of? Kind of getting into some more detailed work here. Watch where my wet paint is when I set my hand down. <laughs> Notoriously bad at not really paying attention to that.
There's Watson. Hi, baby cat. Oh, there he is. He thinks, well, it's up. Look, it's getting close to lunch. You got a while to go before it's time to eat your food. Or are you just saying hi to everybody? <laughs> oh, he just came to say hi to me again. Cat probably just. So I know my good my good microphone is not hooked up and working at the moment for whatever reason right before the stream. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear him talking. That's my cat over here saying hi. And that is the sort of thing, though, that happens when, like, oh, my stream should be going live in five minutes. Let me try to hook up this USB hub. <laughs> hook that to the USB hub, and uh, no, that's not going to work. Don't know why. But now it don't work. It's not going to work when you hook, plug it back in either. So, hey, good job. And... Some days, that's just the way it's going to be for me. So I'll figure it out again, again, before the next stream. Whoa. <laughs> okay, it's Okay, we're starting to get somewhere, maybe. <coughs> <coughs> Possibly. One thing I've kind of uh, 
it to have been not spending a lot of time and effort on is for sure. Lay down some water, and we'll do some wet on wet over here. Again, I apologize for not being very chatty today. Just still a little bit of a sore throat and still a little bit out of it.
<clears throat> well, been at it for about an hour, and I think this is probably a good place to uh, call it for today. As I can tell, I'm getting tired, and I'm only probably going to start screwing things up more than I might otherwise. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah, walk away for now, give myself a little rest. Well, by the time I'm back on this coming Monday evening, Monday evening, hopefully I will be closer to 100% and uh, maybe come a lot closer to finishing this up. We will see, and I, I do hope so. That would be great. Yeah, I feel like good place, good place to walk away because I, I know I'm just not. I'm starting to not be at my peak, so. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for joining me. I will be back at it Monday evening, 7 p.m. Central. Hopefully a little bit more alive. <laughs> And uh, perhaps you'll see my face at that point, and I'll have my nice microphone actually working again and have, uh, have things a little more figured out. So till then, I hope everybody has a great rest of their week and weekend. And stay healthy and warm out there. I think we're getting snow if you're in the Chicagoland area or anywhere abouts. So just be safe and take care, everybody. I'll see